Hi, everyone. Welcome. It's really a great pleasure to see you again, uh, just speaking earlier today. Um, I hope you are starting to get a little bit of a sense of the school, even uh, at a distance. As I said earlier this morning, we have a record number of uh, prospective students interested in joining us. And so we're really excited and grateful for that, but also for the fact that uh, you're all coming from 45 different uh, places in the world and uh, across six continents. And, you know, it just uh, warms my heart to think that so many of you want to become architects and uh, have an impact uh, in the world. So thank you for joining us again. I am here uh, joined by just a number of amazing uh, faculty colleagues who together uh, with myself uh, um, are leading the MR curriculum. Uh, so before sharing a few words about the program, I wanted to introduce them and have them say a few words about themselves. So I'm going to go uh, by the order of my screen. Um, Galia. Hello, everyone. I'm Galia Solomonov. I'm a professor of architecture, um, and I am originally from Argentina, and I'm a practicing architect in the city of New York, a licensed architect. Thank you, Galia. Erica? Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Erica Getz. I'm also a practicing architect in New York, and I coordinate the CORE 2 studio uh, in the second semester of the first year, and I also teach Core 3 housing. Welcome. Thank you, Erica. Hillary? Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome. I'm Hillary Sample. I'm um, an IDC professor of housing design, and I lead the housing studio uh, and also work on the Core, and I'm a co-founder of Moss Architects here in New York and licensed architect. Thanks, Hillary. Hillary. Anna? Good morning, I'm Anna Pujane. I coordinate Core 1, um, also teach Core 1 and uh, Advanced 6. And uh, I run a practice called Mayo based in Barcelona and recently also in New York. We will be giving a lecture uh, today and I invite everyone to join at 6.30. Yes, join. Uh, we're very excited uh, about Anna speaking tonight, um, tonight for our time. Ziad? Yes, hello everyone. My name is Yad Jamaluddin. I'm a partner at Left Architects based in Beirut and New York. And I coordinate and teach Advanced Force Studio. Nice to have you, Ziad. Andres? Yeah, uh, I'm also very happy to be here with all of you. Uh, I'm teaching uh, normally Advanced Studios, uh, and uh, but I'm also the director of the Advanced Architectural Design Program. Uh, and I have a practice, the Office for Political Innovation, which is based in New York, and we develop projects, we're developing projects around the world now. Welcome. Good to have you, Andres. I see you are in New York right now. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're starting to know each other's living rooms. Um, Reinhold? Hi, everyone. Hi, I'm Reinhold Martin. I, uh, I teach the history and theory of architecture here at GSAP and direct the sequence in the MARC program, the history and theory sequence that begins uh, in with the uh, two semesters of questions of architectural history one and two. Uh, and I teach in the fall semester for that as well. And I direct the Buell Center for yes. the Study of American <laughs> Architecture. <laughs> yes, yes, don't forget. Um, yeah. Amina. Hello, everyone. I'm Amina Blacher. I teach Core 1 and Core 2. I am. Uh, I have a New York-based practice called Atelier Amina, um, and I'm very happy to be um, meeting with you today. Thank you, Amina. Great to have you. Lola? Hello. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I'm Lola Benalon, and I'm an assistant professor of building technology. I run the Natural Materials Lab, and I also direct the Building Science and Technology Sequence at GSAP. Good to have you, Lola. Mario? Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Mario Gooden. I'm a professional uh, professor of professional practice at uh, Columbia, 
I am the uh, sequence director for the Advanced 5 and Advanced uh, 6 studio and the co-director of the Global Africa Lab. So uh, great to be with you today. Good to have you, Mario. Laura? Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Kurgan, Professor of Architecture. I'm the director of the visual study sequence for the MRH program. I'm also the director of the Center for Spatial Research and launching today a new program called Computational Design Practices, but that um, open house is at 2 p.m. I hope to see some of you there. Super exciting. Okay, I know we don't have much time. I will have a very short, I'll try to keep it short presentation and then open it up um, for questions. Um, you're not here today, but I hope you will have or will uh, tour our virtual uh, Avery tour, which uh, was constructed recently. Um, as I mentioned this morning, I think it doesn't completely convey the experience of being here uh, in the buildings and on this campus, but uh, will give you a great sense of the different spaces and studios and classrooms and uh, labs that um, exist at the school. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I really do believe that the school is very much uh, engaged in this question of scales of engagement. At what scale do we approach um, the issues of our time? And certainly this transpires into the MR program, into its curriculum, into its identity. It's, an, it's, a, it's a curriculum that's very engaged. Our students are incredibly engaged and we think through these questions of scale uh, in everything we do. Whether we're looking at you know, issues of climate, as I said, earlier, which, you know, extend from uh, the experience of our students and, and through coursework, through summer workshop, uh, but also extend to uh, the research that our faculty is doing. And this is Lola Benalon's uh, Natural Materials Lab, which is really trying um, to explore alternates to materials such as concrete, can steel, uh, and something that, that we know we must do if we think about energy and embodied energy in particular. Um, earlier today, I also mentioned that we're very engaged with issues of equity, social equity, racial equity, and thinking through issues of representation. This is something we've been doing uh, for quite some time, and it's really intensified in the past two years with the GSAP Anti-Racism Action Plan, which I invite you all um, to look at. Um, but I'm also very proud that our faculty have brought all these issues into the curriculum and not just studio, into visual studies, into technology, of course, into history theory and all of the dimensions uh, of the school. This extends to the kinds of events um, we host that are always questioning the foundations of the discipline or what we imagine the foundations to be and recasting them and extends to the kinds of research that we do in the research centers, some of them led by faculty, some of them led by students, constantly kind of pushing the boundaries of practice, such as with the housing lab, to try to define new modes of more equitable practice in the built environment. You heard uh, Laura Kurgan, we're launching a new computational design uh, practices program today. And this is really the result of the school's kind of leading or, or, or situating itself at the cutting edge of how we think critically, actively uh, about, about data and its impact on the built environment and become really skilled uh, to be able to sort of critically engage with, with these issues. And this really is a result. I mean, this new program will exist and, and kind of exist alongside the MRC and build on a lot lot of uh, what is fundamental uh, to the MRC, thinking about um, technology through building science, uh, all, but, you know, in terms of the built environment, in terms of issues of, of energy in light of climate change, but also thinking about imagination and how we uh, sort of think about new worlds and design them uh, in new ways. And always for, you know, never forgetting that um, we, it's not in a void, the kind of virtual, as we see that the sort of uh, virtual and the physical need to interact and exist together. And this feedback loop between um, data and the material um, and, and experience in the city and what can be created as a result is something that is uh, crucial and central to the program here at the school. So taking you through very briefly um, the actual sequence, you may know it's sort of three and three, uh, three kind of core in the first three semesters, three advanced in the last three semesters. And what you see here in terms of the colors are the different sequences, studio history theory, visual studies, 
um, building science, technology, and professional practice. And what you know, we like to think is that the core is not just a sort of authoritarian, authoritative uh, transfer of knowledge, but rather and kind of empowering you to ask questions about um, the curriculum. And then in the second part, um, to really kind of think through your own positions collectively, individually, vis-a-vis -vis, um, the discipline and vis-a-vis -vis the practice of architecture. And what is, I think, unique, and this is why it's so important that we are all here on this screen together. What is unique, I think, about the MARC is that each sequence, uh, while working really together, has its own identity in a way and kind of states a position on what it believes architectural practice and architecture as a discipline should do. And so we find that our students kind of carve a, a way through the curriculum to claim a certain position in terms of whether it's going to be more weighed on design or redefining design relative to, to data or engaging really issues of materiality or or scholarship and, and, and history. And so just kind of very briefly taking, giving some examples, you know, in the building technology, if you're interested in uh, the kind of thinking uh, of that sequence, I encourage you to hear the um, recent podcast that um, Lola Professor Benalon has launched. Um, and, you know, we really, again, think through uh, issues of scale from surfaces and building materials um, to really engaging the city. And I would say that this is something that is still really fundamental to the school more than ever is we have New York right here and the, we are constantly kind of using it uh, as uh, sort of not so much a laboratory but a, as a place uh, to test some of uh, uh, ideas about uh, how architecture is really shaping the built environment. For the history theory curriculum, uh, as Reinhold mentioned, it's questions of architectural history uh, one and two, and not just history. And this is because, you know, we are sitting sort of above, below, around every library, which represents, uh, you know, the, which is the uh, probably the largest architecture library in the world and still sort of represents a certain canon. And we are constantly pushing against for um, this canon and kind of opening it up. And so it's really about questions whether, um, you know, our, 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 our PhD program in architecture is, I, I can say, the best certainly uh, in the in the country because of that constant pushing of the boundaries with um, here you're seeing uh, Professor Lucia Alep, Professor Felicity Scott who directs the program and Barry Bergdahl who is in arts and history you know this kind of conversation on 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 thinking about uh, history and its its impact not just uh, in terms of a kind of European and Eurocentric history but really a, a, a history that brings all different kinds of perspectives together it's crucial um, to, to the sequence. And that's in particular uh, something that it's pushed on issues of, uh, of race and, and representation, on issues of environment and how to rethink modernity um, uh, um, through a, a new lens given the climate crisis we are in and producing sort of new discourses, new ideas, new ways to think about history in a way that is engaged in making books and making new knowledge and scholarship, such as through uh, Columbia Books on Architecture and the City, which you should check out on the website. And hopefully when you're here um, in person, you know, this is an amazing office, a publication office for the school that is, I think is producing great new knowledge for the field. In terms of visual studies, you know, it's been, it was, um, it's always been a very exciting uh, sequence of the literacy uh, with which our students uh, kind of take in software and data and, 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 and their imagination and design skills. You know, this was an amazing kind of uh, uh, project that they did when we were all remote, uh, you know, just, um, just an incredible um, um, sort of knowledge uh, uh, in terms of um, how to address uh, data and, and design, which, as I mentioned, cuts across the research of our faculty and always uh, brings back uh, this conversation to the physical in a sort of feedback loop between uh, the virtual, the physical, uh, 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 in a really important way, I think, for the future. And the professional practice 
practice for us is not just a course. It's really, again, engaging with the city, going to offices. You know, we are very um, sort of lucky to be able uh, to kind of count amongst our um, colleagues, many, many professionals uh, in the city that are here for reviews that invite our students to offices. And so this level of connection and, 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 and this incredible network, generous network, I think is, is really very, very special and unique. And at the same time, being able to invite uh, people back to think through, you know, what, what kind of uh, professional sort of path that you want to take and, and how are you going to negotiate for it? We're very proud of supporting our students kind of skill making, uh, skill building in, in, in asking what's right for them through our career services uh, pro program. And so finally, uh, I would say, you know, many of these ideas, you will spend a lot of time uh, in, in studio, bringing them all together um, from core one, and I will speak a little bit about it, uh, which is really the first uh, introduction to design uh, here and is completely anchored in the city, in issues of scale, um, and in, in issues of context and redefining how one thinks about site or analyzes site or thinks about context. Um, to core two, uh, which is a small institutional building for the past few years, it's been a school often in, in the East Village or the Lower East Side. And, you know, education at this moment is at such a juncture. It's been fascinating to have students think through, you know, what needs to happen together, what needs, what can happen remotely and, and how kids are educated um, today and what is the impact of the of a building and of space on, on education to the question of housing, which brings a lot of these issues of equity and climate change and data and design to kind of bear upon a pretty large scale um, sort of uh, intervention in the city, often uh, around the around the, our neighborhood, often around uh, Harlem, where there's a long history of, of very interesting housing and poses really critical cool issue in terms of what houses housing has enabled in terms of coming together or on the contrary dividing uh, historically. And the, the last three um, studios uh, from Advance 4 led by Ziad to Advance 5 and 6 uh, led by Mario uh, uh, with, uh, you know, Andre stepping in uh, in terms of the AAD program is again thinking through materiality, thinking through scale, thinking through moving beyond the kind of uh, maybe the tangible and the built to the kind of intangible and environmental to broaden uh, uh, these questions and, and make the invisible more visible so that we can act on it. And it really focuses on issues of representation and questions, um, you know, where is it that we should intervene as, as architects, um, you know, um, in a kind of very, very, I think, interesting and productive way. The spring um, st uh, studio, the last semester, is the semester of the Kinney Traveling Fellowship. And um, the school has had a long uh, tradition of sort of encounter uh, as a mode of, of knowledge. And it's something that we hope to, to, um, to do again um, next year. And so, you know, I encourage you to scroll through abstract or the portfolios. You're also uh, connected to Instagram and other modes of uh, uh, broadcasting what's happening here at the school. But, it, you know, I just want to say that this is incredible to see how much students articulate what is important to them uh, in, in a short time. And it's not just about design. It's also about uh, writing, about thinking and, and kind of create a sense of identity for themselves as they go out in the world. School life, um, you will be, if you're with us, almost overwhelmed with the amount of events and conversations and often um, they, um, this is our animated poster which doesn't show what's on, but if you want to see what's on, you can get on the website and tonight Anna will be speaking. But what's interesting about um, the events and the public um, lectures and, and all of these conversations is that even though you're in the MRC and you're gonna feel very crunched in terms of your time, these are windows into the other programs. And often as a result, students decide to 
take, you know, add another degree, as I mentioned this morning, dual degrees have become incredibly uh, popular. Um, you really will um, spill uh, out in the city uh, and not just be limited to the campus. And that's um, always kind of really um, exciting. There's a lot of, um, institutional ties and collaborations uh, with other um, cultural institutions, museums, etc. This is um, an exhibition that was done at the Queens Museum and, and students uh, participated uh, with the makerspace in building the models for the exhibitions. And this is just one example of many collaborations. Our um, student groups are brilliant and many and numerous, and they organize their own events and conversations that are always so timely and posing uh, important questions for us at the school and for the field. We have an incredibly engaged alumni board, increasingly engaged. Uh, and I'll say that in the last 18 months, they really stepped in to support our, our students and you know, kind of uh, share with them thoughts on what our possible path um, for architecture and for architects in the world. So that's it for my presentation. And uh, we am very eager to get your questions and have everyone jump in to, to respond. So, uh, uh, okay, this is link issues. So I, I will just say, that for any kind of logistical questions on scholarships or application or et cetera, I think it'll, the best is to uh, direct those questions to Stefan Boudicker, um, who will either answer here in the chat or please email him. Um, this way we can make sure to use, uh, to use this time for content and for the sequence directors and coordinators to share more about, um, about the MARC uh, program. We do have a great question here from um, Alan uh, Cruzosa uh, Acevedo. What is the theory mm -hmm. at GSEP based upon, and does it welcome theory and discourse happening in places elsewhere? Yes, thank you, Laila. This is a great question, and I want to invite everyone to share. Um, there's no single theory, uh, and uh, and but I would say that it is uh, most definitely uh, the kinds of discourses that. Uh, happen and are supported at, are, at the school are ones that um, are, are really, really working to be uh, more inclusive and to bring very many different perspectives um, together uh, in, in debate, in contrast, um, but, but uh, certainly there is no single, uh, single theory. Um, there is also, I think, a very, mm, uh, more than theory, I would say the last few years for me at least have been incredible in terms of where architectural history uh, has gone and, and what it has uh, produced in terms of opening up new possibilities. So maybe I can invite Reinhold to say a few words about that. Uh, yeah, no, thanks for the question. Um, well, first of all, yes, absolutely. The, the, the one of the reasons that uh, you know, for example, when I introduce myself as a director of history and theory that put those two concepts together and two teaching, uh, you know, um, uh, approaches together is, is because we're really of, of this, the spirit, I think, in which you're, you're asking the question, uh, Alec, I think. Um, and so, which is to say that all theory, whatever, whatever that could mean in, in, in the sense of, you know, Architects writing about about buildings, or or or, uh, or about the design of cities, planners writing about cities, or whatever, or the, it's the interpretation of those those objects and processes, and so on. All of that is situated historically. It happens someplace in a particular language, in a particular setting, with a particular framework, and certainly in the history and theory seminars. And this I know is in uh, echoed and and you know reverberates around the whole curriculum. Um, when we when we think about these matter, we, matters, we, we really very much think and teach uh, uh, about how uh, and in what sense uh, these concepts might be situated. So much so, so, for example, in the QAH sequence that I mentioned, that we actually we read a lot of primary sources, like you know, texts written by architects and and, and their interpreters uh, over a couple of centuries, and we've made a significant effort to translate texts, for example, in Arabic and. There's some in, in from Spanish from Latin America and 
and others um, uh, to to read not not just you know kind of English language uh, generalizations about you know the, these parts of the world, but but voices uh, from uh, from around the world. So that's the spirit um, of uh, of this across the board. I would say, yeah. There's a few questions. Thank you, Reinhold. Uh, and I, I know we'll kind of, there's a lot of responses will overlap. Uh, there's, a, there's a number of questions as always on what makes us different? Uh, you know, what makes one accredited program different from another? After all, we are all uh, following the same sort of, well, we're not a checkbox school, uh, first of all. And I think uh, as you see on the screen, uh, it, you know, I, I I, I, I'm very proud that it's really uh, a, a, a team, a kind of collective of people coming together to think about, uh, you know, what is architecture? What is architecture as a discipline? What is architecture as practice? Um, for me, at least, I don't know any other school that asks so many questions about the discipline, about practice. Uh, and, uh, and that's really exciting because this is, I think, what we, uh, what we hope to, to empower our students to do, to, to never just take something as a, as a, as a sort of given, uh, but try to delineate uh, or reshape uh, its, its boundaries. And, uh, and so I think that is what uh, makes us, I think for me, special. It's really an ongoing conversation. And, uh, and there's a, just a tremendous uh, sense of um, possibility uh, in terms of shaping uh, what the future uh, of the field is, but also re rethinking and understanding in a new way what the past was. Uh, uh, and that's really uh, important uh, at this moment in particular, but others may want to jump in. I'll say, I can say something. I think it's, it, um, you know, the question of uniqueness um, always, always comes up um, in every open house and I imagine everybody is going. Um, to a lot of open houses. And it's not something that we want to do is say that we're better than other schools, you know, all schools, uh, you know, there are many, many good schools. Maybe it's not the best thing to say um, at an open house, but I think it's it's really important to look when you when you when you go to some schools because the weaknesses of some the, the, our weaknesses are our strengths and our strengths are our weaknesses in every school that you go to. So if you're in the, going to a small school, you know, the, the strengths are that it's small and its weaknesses are that they're not as many classes or choices and things like that. Um, you know, sometimes when there are that many choices, it's confusing as a student to choose. And I think that, you know, if I would say what's unique um, about about GSAP is, um, you know, our willingness always to be on the forefront um, of complicated and difficult ideas and pushing um, the profession forward. And um, from my perspective of visual studies and visual technology, I think we have a very large range of classes that you don't that you don't find in other schools. I think. I can't speak for history and theory, but I'd say it's the same in in history and theory and many and many other um, uh, aspects um, of our curriculum. So I really do encourage you when you go to other schools, you know, just look at the variety of courses that are available and compare them um, against ours. I think it's one of our big strengths. Thanks, Laura. Um, there's a number of questions. There's a question on, on collaboration and whether we support collaboration. And as you see on the screen, I think we're we we very much support uh, collaboration, uh, not just in in the curriculum and the design studio. But I thought maybe I could even uh, invite Lola to say a few words, Professor Benalon, on collaboration in the tech sequence, which I think is quite unique uh, relative to to maybe uh, other programs. Thanks, Amal. Yes, definitely. I also saw a question about um, um, courses from historic preservation. Is there any possibility to take 
some courses from HP. And as part of the Building Science and Technology sequence, we offer uh, cross, uh, uh, we cross list courses from historic preservation. And um, so that is a nice opportunity to engage with uh, critical topics on preservation and technology of preservation. We have a course on machine learning and preservation and also uh, traditional building practices that you can take as part of um, uh, the tech sequence. Um, for collaboration, certainly, so we, we're striving to uh, implement more and more um, design build possibilities where you can collaborate essentially in the building uh, science and technology sequence. Many of the courses you will work in teams to um, not only analyze and invent technology, but also to produce and fabricate building uh, elements and components. Um, um, and that um, also uh, uh, resulted in a, um, a design built course, for instance, that um, Galia here on the screen has uh, led with another faculty where they design and built uh, a, a pavilion here in front of the school so many avenues to collaborate between uh, uh, you, between students, and also with the faculty. Thank you, thank you, Lola. Um, Galia, do you want to say a few words on that experience? And and sure. Um, thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, I think uh, last semester uh, we built a pavilion together. And it was an inflatable pavilion, and so. It was basically an opportunity to do something with air and um, and together and and in a way come together uh, and, uh, as the vaccine was released and as we started to do things together and and there to be out of our homes and um, the result was a very engaged group of twenty two students. Um, and the confluence of uh, our diversities. I, I would say our strength um, is our um, diversity and it's not our as faculty, but the, the diversity that you bring to us every year uh, from the many places that you come. And our strength is to integrate um, the influences from the outside. You do not come to a set set of principles you come to participate for a year, two, three uh, in um, a joint uh, team. And so it's collaboration, diversity, um, forward thinking uh, goes together. And I think uh, if we talk about strengths, we also have to talk about our weakness and the weakness is that there's never enough time to do everything that wants to do at Columbia. It's a, it's a tease of a school in a way. Um, and so we go as deep as we can uh, for the amount of time that we have and we continue to be engaged for life. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken as a true alum. Thank you, Galia. Um, there's a question about uh, what are opportunities for community engagement? And I thought maybe uh, Hillary, you could say a few words about the housing studio and also uh, Mario, if you wanted to uh, also think through even your advisory role for the housing lab in particular. Great, thanks Amal. Um, yeah, the, with the housing studio, we are actively working on a project uh, in the Bronx, in the Melrose neighborhood. And with that, uh, we're working with a community garden and so the students last year and this year have already started um, doing some volunteer work as part of the studio and um, working with the community garden. Uh, they come and speak to the students and then they also participate on reviews. So it's a, a kind of exchange between the students, um, the faculty and also those in the community. They have a kind of annual uh, stickball game that happens on a weekend and students are invited to go out and then um, you know, kind of informally other activities happen around helping them with small projects um, like painting murals, um, repairing furniture, uh, other things that, that come up and, um, and that. And also um, not so much in terms of uh, the, that local to the neighborhood, but it's complemented and expanded through working also at the city um, with HPD. So we have um, 
city agents who are part of the studio as well and really explain, for instance, design guidelines, uh, how they're written for housing. And um, this has been going on for about two years now. We also offer workshops that students can take later on. So there's beginning to be more and more kind of feedback loops, both within the neighborhood and at the city. Hi, uh, just to pick up on uh, on Hillary's comments regarding the, the housing studio, I'm advising uh, the housing lab. And in the housing lab, our graduate students have the opportunity to be research assistants in the housing lab uh, for the past year and a half. The housing lab has been working with the West Harlem Group Assistance uh, Agency and uh, providing uh, their expertise as students who've been working on housing and thinking through issues of, of housing. Uh, the students have also been working with uh, city agencies, uh, as Hillary has mentioned, uh, HPD and others. And so there uh, are opportunities to sort of uh, get into, let's say, real world situations um, and engage the community um, through housing and you know, be directly engaged you know, with the community that surrounds our school, that surrounds Columbia. So thank you for that question. And, and uh, Mario, maybe if you wanted to expand on the, there was a question on design equity uh, in particular, and uh, I don't know if you wanted to mention the work you've been doing also with the Global Africa Lab and other uh, sort of uh, your own focus uh, in a way as well. Sure. Well, um, I think um, uh, for those of you attending our open house, if you you know uh, take a, a really good look at the website, you'll see you know, there are, are have been three areas of, of focus that we've really been focusing on uh, over the last uh, few years. That is uh, climate and climate change, uh, equity, um, and uh, and technology. And um, I think. That um, if, if anything, the past 18 months has has shown us that um, uh, that these things are all entangled, um, and uh, that the when we think of climate, we also have to think about climate justice. Um, so the issue of, of equity doesn't necessarily stand stand alone. And in the advanced studios, um, as well as uh, the AAD program, and then I'll turn it over to Andreas, and maybe Andreas can speak about that. Um, we've also been uh, the past few semesters having conversations at a kind of larger level about justice, conversations about entanglement, and conversations this semester about intersections. But these have uh, have to do with questions, if you will, um, around these issues. And maybe just to kind of go back to one of the, the previous questions: what makes our uh, school unique, um, and I think Reinhold said it, it uh, and uh, the dean said it, it's really about questioning. So, you know, we have questions of architectural history um, in our studios, the advanced studios. We're asking questions, so um, we're not, I would say that for GSAP, it's not about sort of style or it's not about um, a priori knowledge, but asking questions in order to uh, to produce new knowledge, and that includes knowledge around issues such as spatial justice uh, and equity. Um, so, Andreas, I don't know if you'd like to expand on that. Well, I just want to say that, um, and uh, this has to do with the uh, advanced studios mostly, but with the with the whole culture of the studios in the school, uh, it's uh, it's growing in a discussion of. Uh, how architecture is entangled uh, and a fundamental player in the huge uh, crisis and, and uh, issues that are shaping the times that we're living uh, from climate, of course, that has been mentioned to ecological crisis uh, to, of course, inequality, but also border conflicts and how they are participated, not only by the architecture of the, of the border, but also how they manifest in every single aspect of the built environment uh, to questions, of course, of gender, but also to questions of uh, trans uh, species relationships and other forms of justice that we have to address now. And what I think is very, very uh, important uh, of the school, uh, it's how this is also dealt with, not just as a, a matter of discussion, but a matter of design. 
how design and the material world is playing a key role in the enactment of all these realities and how different scenarios can be uh, and, uh, uh, promoted uh, through design evolutions. And I think this is crucial. It's uh, this culture of entanglements and intersections that Mario uh, and I have been discussing for many, uh, uh, for many years now and that is uh, happening in the studios. And it's something very, very important, I would say, that manifests in many different ways in the school. Thank you, Andres. Uh, and, you know, since we, you know, Andres and Mario occupy the, the end of the, of the curriculum, I thought I'd give an opportunity to, to the, the people who are holding the beginning, uh, uh, Amina, uh, Anna and Erica, there's a really nice uh, question um, uh, from Rachel Strumpf. As educators, professionals and leaders in your fields, is there anything in particular you hope to impact upon your students, in particular those who might be emerging designers? So someone shows up on day one, what, what are you trying to share with them? Amina, do you wanna share some thoughts? Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, it's a privilege and it's a really joy to be engaging students in the first semester um, of the six semesters if they're doing the um, MR. Um, and I think um, regardless of the background, it's uh, really a productive kind of exchange, whether you have a BARC or another uh, field that you come from. In core one, as we analyze Broadway and each section um, dives deeper into a segment of, of Manhattan, um, Throughout the studio and in my section, we start with a premise where it's incumbent upon you as an architect, a future architect, to be aware and knowledgeable of the land on which you stand. And so that kind of puts time into play that we're standing in the present, but you also, before you break ground, you need to know, um, not just as a kind of surprise, but all of the layers that come before. So we look at the section as a stack. Uh, what's in the ground is kind of a past, the present as the surface, and then the infinite possibilities that can come kind of from the ground up. So it's a really exciting uh, semester. All of the different mediums, drawings, different techniques, one-to-one -one mock up, I think is a really good kind of just moment to look at your project through a uh, a scale that's at construction scale. Uh, so it produces really diverse range of imaginations. And I think the students, going back to the question, what makes GSAP stand out? Um, the imagination. I just think that it's really a meeting of creative minds. And then it's about kind of basing your position in a logic. So you can have any kind of take um, is, and, and we refine that uh, clarity of the logic. So, yeah, I think, um, oh, yeah, it's great. Thank you. I want to follow up uh, Mina's comments, um, expanding um, what we do on the first semester and also inviting, yes, we encourage uh, um, students with a non-architectural background to apply. Yes, please do apply. We love uh, diverse, uh, um, um, narratives, diverse contexts, and we bring all that knowledge on the table um, in Core One, um, as Amina was mentioning, looking to the context, talking about what means public, and that relates what we, has been said already. We talk about social justice uh, in public space and how to use public and the sense of public to uh, break down uh, social imbalances. And what makes the school unique is uh, that precisely we talk about the contemporary all the time. And that affects directly in how we address our courses and we teach. We change a lot. Uh, we are a, a community that talk and discuss a lot about what's happening out there. So we do relate. There was also a question about how we do relate with what happens outside academia. We do relate what happens outside academia because we talk about that all the time and that influence in the way we teach. So courses evolved to that uh, in response to that. So in these last years, we have been, uh, semester, sorry, we have uh, addressed uh, 
the racial imbalances that do have happened in New York and are still happening in order to try to understand public space in a way, in a, as a tool to be able to dismantle them. So um, I think that definitely, uh, probably when you look to our curriculum, you will see that approach to the contemporary and critical thinking very rooted in all courses. Also in Courtou, Erika. Sure, thank you. I think uh, Core 2 very much kind of picks up on uh, what, what it started in Core 1, but we're looking at the city and history and the ground that Amina talked about at the scale, uh, very much of a building. So we work on an existing building on the Lower East Side, which, as Amal mentioned, is a public school that was built over 100 years ago for a community of immigrants uh, in a neighborhood that is kind of has an amazing history of, of people um, and is incredibly diverse. And we go inside of the building, um, which is kind of an archaeological site at the moment. It's an abandoned building, and we learn from its history through its very physicality. And I think that's also one of the things that makes the program unique. Of course, it's here in New York. and. Um, uh, and it's in in the in the slipstream of a city that is always in motion, and the people that you interface with um, in in core two and, and other semesters are are working in the city. So we work with a team of engineers who are professionals in the field who come into the studios and talk to you one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one about the very projects that you're designing, and we engage with. The physical sites that we're working on so the core sequence is all based here in the city and so you're very much doing kind of field research and and a part of the sites and the projects and the histories um through uh through physically being present in them and, and working on um uh, a piece in time that's uh, as amina described as part of history and then projecting something about what you you could imagine there Thanks, thanks, Erica. And um, just tying, continuing to go to advance four for a second, tying the question of, you know, climate change is not some abstract, uh, sort of, uh, you know, entity. It has very specific, you know, consequences on 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 different neighborhoods, different places, and different kinds of people. And um, and I wondered, Ziad, if you wanted to talk, you know, about that intersection. Uh, in, in the sort of uh, context uh, of, of Advanced 4. Yeah, thank you. I think Advanced 4 actually sits right in the middle. It's before Advanced 5 and 6, and of course, it's after the core studios. In that sense, it plays that bridge between the core studios kind of concern with the advanced studios concern that are much more global and general. And I think what Advanced 4 then does is uh, at, maybe at multiple levels is to first to build on core 1, 2, and 3, which is mostly focused on a relationship of architecture to the city and moves to the larger scale, which is the relationship of architecture to the larger geography and the territorial scale by namely focusing on upstate New York and the kind of rural countryside, let's say, area of, of, of New York State, but also problematizing that relationship between the city and the hinterland and the countryside. So I think in that sense, Advance 4 tries to bridge uh, from uh, the core to advance five, six studios where students are, yes, like I mean, I mentioned, are asked to take a position, construct an argument, and hence start to formulate a thesis, which is then further developed. They have more freedom to develop their thesis than in advance five and six studios. And maybe I want to add one more thing, if I can, regarding the very first question, the theories, the multiple theory. And for me, that Reinhold had mentioned, going back to the primary sources as in the text, but there's also an attempt in the studio to go to the primary source as the building, kind of to visit the building that we've studied and actually look at it from a fresh eye. And I think it's a question that has to do with expanding the field uh, at, at its base and kind of uncovering raised architectural histories that have been either marginalized or kind of assumed to be outside the canon. So in that sense, I think advanced studios five and six especially try to focus on, on region and areas that have been historically been marginalized, like North Africa or considered at the periphery, let's say, of Europe, and try to also sustain relationship with those places by building and by building a kind of a relationship with the local communities there, with experts in the field, which is also, I should mention, is kind of sustained and empowered by Colombia Global Centers in those places that allow these relationships to happen and to continue. 
Uh, thanks, Ziad. Just to reiterate for all of you who are wondering, you know, whether your background uh, is welcome, uh, 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 please apply. Absolutely. Uh, we are really always excited to uh, have students from, you know, very many different uh, backgrounds come together. And, you know, I saw a question about independent research. Uh, Everything you do is a form of independent research, um, but at the same time, you can also uh, obviously choose uh, to work with a particular faculty. Uh, Professor Benalon did that recently, and so this is um, welcome as well if you can carve the time uh, in, 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 in your curriculum. There's also a question about um, the Center for Spatial Research, uh, and I thought maybe, Laura, you could uh, share some thoughts um, about it and about how, in general, the interface, uh, you know, students interface with uh, the research at the school happens. Yeah, hi, thanks. Um, thanks for that question. Um, CSR is a, is a grant um, funded center and um, we have been funded by the Mellon Foundation for a long period of time and we're working right now um, with a grant from the Gardner Foundation about um, the history of New York City and the census and how to document the, the history of the city, a really interesting and very time consuming um, project. So we have, um, we have had three TA ships um, every semester. They're, um, they're competitive and you know, there's an application process like all, um, like all TA ships. And we like to hire students who have mapping, um, knowledge of mapping experience, whether QGIS or GIS and things like that. There's also some research oriented opportunities. And every summer we do engage um, a large number um, of students in the various research projects that we're working on. And so, over the past two summers, we've had between um, six and eight students work with us on various projects, which is the same as the Buell Center. And um, I have a feeling the Natural Materials Lab will also be hiring students this summer. I don't know about the other labs, but those are the three I know about. So centers and research labs are a really great way to get involved in collaborative work and with specific um, interests of faculty. And at CSR in particular, we really do make um, uh, links to urban planning and um, other parts of the school and also other parts of the university. So we've done projects with neuroscience, with history, with data science, um, all kinds of all kinds of fields. Thanks, Laura. We have a few minutes left uh, and maybe I'll end with a very broad uh, question and, and please jump in. Uh, from your perspectives, what is the most impactful part of attending GSAP as either a student or a faculty? Um, are, is it the studios you take, the resources you have, the relationships and connections you make? Um, and uh, in a way, how did GSAP change your life? So I, I should just start by saying that, um, you know, I think any school that you attend or choose to attend will change your life. That, you know, and this is why it's such a important decision uh, to make. And uh, many of us have uh, been lucky to be able to choose this place to teach in and be part of. And uh, just for me personally, it's been uh, the incredible um, um, group of colleagues uh, at this school. I learn every day from them and from the students. And it's just a, a really wonderful um, place to be part of. Uh, just to think through uh, in this difficult time. And I think to be part of that kind of intellectual community and friendship is, uh, is really all we can uh, ask for in this moment, but I'll turn it over to some of you. Hi, yeah, no, I just wanted to, uh, I've been teaching here for a, a while and, and, and have to echo, first of all, Dean Andres' um, kind of appreciation of the what Laura, I think, was referring to as a sort of strength in numbers, um, both at any given time, but also over time. And, and so, you know, for example, now at this point, uh, some of my former students are now my colleagues. And, and this is really uh, a privilege to, to be able to, in a way, to share the institution um, with both students and colleagues in, in different capacities. Just uh, in the spirit of sharing, I, I really, I wanted to underline the questions from Ishmam and Wyatt about liberal arts education and so on. This is very much part of, of an architecture education in general, and especially I'd say here that 
that um, this this is uh, a, 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 the curriculum that we're here discussing is really set up to 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 welcome and and cultivate critical knowledge and critical conversations from across the humanities and across the social sciences that you've been hearing. Uh, and uh, you know, there's there's a fair amount of reading and writing in the history sequence of this, but but more than that, there's um, the there's a conversation, and and that conversation uh, w- would be very kind of deeply impoverished. Not not just like do you admit, you know, kind of people with non so-called non-architecture, but it, it would not be conceivable without uh, the 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 knowledge and the, the questions posed by the humanities uh, and the social sciences. So. Uh, so this is very much, um, you know, I, I would say, part of how the big questions, the ones that we have been this climate and, you know, and and, and equity and so on, uh, are articulated and 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 identified is through these types of um, this kind of sharing of knowledge rather than mere mere specialization uh, in a in a professional kind of you know sense. So. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Reinhold. That's a good, uh, anyone else? Well, thank you so much again for joining us wherever you are, whatever time it is where you are. Uh, it's, uh, it's really great to be able to share a little bit um, about, about the school. And, uh, you know, I know that not all the questions were uh, you know, answered very precisely, and you know, Stefan, and uh, we'll make sure to do you know things like what is the difference between one program or the next, and you know, we'll make sure to get uh, all of this answered. But um, again, uh, this is, I think, an incredible community of colleagues, and uh, we look forward to to staying in touch. And I'm so excited to know so many of you are thinking about architecture um, for the future. So thank you for that um, as well. Thank Bye. <laughs> it's always weird still. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye, everyone.